It has really been a long time since I have made a video on my channel because I was packed up with various stuff at my office but here today I am back with another important yet sensitive video. Today I am going to talk about how you can switch your working domain from IT to VLSI. I am going to mention various experiences I have gathered from my colleagues or my friends and various persons as well from the industry. I have been working in this sector for about one and a half year or so. Of course this is not a huge experience but this video is very going to be very useful to you guys if you apply it in a prompt manner. I have been requested to make this video for a long time. So here today I am making this video and it is going to be an extensive one, a detailed one. So just stay tuned until the end of the video and I am sure you will find whatever you are interested or whatever you are looking for and it will surely help you. So why delay, let's dive in right into the video. <music> Before we dive in right into the video, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Vivek, I host this channel. I make a lot of educational content videos, especially these days I have been making videos related to VLSI domain because I have been working in this domain and this video is related to such. And here today I am going to talk about the switch domain from IT to VLSI and how you can do that. But understand the fact, this is very important because switching a domain is not as easy as you think and not as smooth as you think. The, it involves a lot of things, it involves a lot of processes and just I am going to exp exp explain the experiences and the process whatever I know, you can apply it promptly and it is surely going to help you. So for who's, who, which kind of people is this video intended to? This video is intended for those who have been working in the IT domain for a couple of years, probably two or three years and whoever are looking for a switch in the domain, probably to VLSI and here also the person would have been from an ECE background that would be helpful but even if you are not from an ECE background um, because people from CSE are also interested in VLSI and are also given an opportunity these days. So if you are interested and if you are not from ECE background as well, this video is for you as well. Simply that you need to put in a little more hard work because your background or your foundation is not as strong as ECE ones. You just need to refer, you just need to put in a lot of hard work. And that is with the introduction, let's go into the main step of the video. I am going to explain this video in three steps for your better understanding. Also, you can skip to whatever point you want in the timestamps as well. Step 1 is going to be basics. Step 2 is going to be what companies expect. And step 3 is going to be what is the application process for the job. So basically starting off with the basics, you need to understand that even though you are from an EC background or CSC background, basics doesn't just mean uh, the basic. Uh, RLC circuits or not, that's not just basics, right? There are a lot of subjects which are related to VLSI domain and you need to have a proper knowledge in that. For example, what do I mean? Uh, these are uh, standards little higher than the basics. For example, uh, physics electronics, right? Device electronics and also other things like the subjects related to static timing analysis or the subjects related to DFT, right? So, Probably I will explain much regarding this in the second step, but you need to know at least the basics, how you can know and what you need to prepare. First decide what is the domain you are interested in. And VLSA is not just a short domain, it is a lot of mixture of lot of things like for example uh, physical design engineer or physical design verification engineer or DFT related engineer or static timing analysis SGA engineer or there are a lot of other things as well which even I am not sure it is a lot of things to explore. but understand what role you are interested in and so once you have selected that role you need to be strong in the subjects related to those you need to be strong in the basics related to ECE and after that you need to be strong in this basics related to ECE means the basic digital electronic circuits the basic microelectronics the basic MOSFETs the basic FinFETs how do they operate how are they functional and all those things those are just basics and also the subjects which are related to the domain you have selected so you need to understand these two important points here, the subjects of basics and the subjects which you are interested to pursue. You need to be at least clear on the basics before going on to see the second process I will explain you in detail. And uh, where also how you can prepare and uh, how you can get the knowledge. Online is the best source. So there are a lot of YouTube channels, I will be making a separate video how you can prepare for more of those. But YouTube channels are one of those. Try to get materials from students who have gone to training institutes or uh, 
or whoever have done masters in ELSA, you can just get their materials. I will try to provide that as well soon as soon as possible. And also uh, one more thing is that you can try to read books or download them from the internet. So all these three things are going to help you to gather basics. But I am going to explain in detail what and how are these going to be helpful in the second point. What is the second point? What companies expect? You cannot just apply or you cannot just apply after graduation in the company's website and they are not just going to take you, right? What do they expect? They are going to expect a proper resume. What in the resume are they going to expect? Projects, the tool, whatever you are going to work on like Calibre or Innovus or Tempus or whatever company related tools, at least the basics they are going to expect you to know. Prior project knowledge and a lot of things, right? These are some of the things what they expect from you. But how you can get that? There are a lot of training institutes which you need to take up. Of course, it is going to cost you a lot of money, probably 40,000, 30,000 or depending on the institution. But depending on the course you are interested in and depending on the subjects you are interested to pursue, select an institution. I will display whatever institutes are present online and in Bangalore as well. You can just refer to those. I have not gone in, gone in detail about what they present what they have, what is the curriculum, but as per your interests and as per your financial requirements and financial conditions, you can just choose the institutions. Why are they important? They provide you with the prior project knowledge, right? Project knowledge is very important because that is what provides you with something you can project in your resume and that is what is going to take you forward. I will explain you further what is this in the third point, but this is going to help you. Also, they are going to provide you with licenses where you can work with the projects right uh, the tool whatever company is going to use in the first point i have mentioned that you need to prepare or self prepare how to what extent you can do that it is not to the complete extent right uh, sometimes self preparation is not very easy especially for bachelor students because this is a little high par and uh, you need to put in a lot of effort so to to compensate this or to support this training institutes are going to help training institutes are not going to smooth feed you uh, the various stuff you need to know but understand that they are going to help you a lot they are going to provide you with licenses. So these licenses you are going to add in your resume, you are going to have prior knowledge in that and this is what puts you forward. Also, try to um, get into internships or etc. where these institutes help you to get in. Because once you get trained in the institute, these institutes help you to get a job offer or internship. They have contacts, right? They, have, they help you get into the interviews and from there it depends on your complete performance. So this is how you can uh, basically improve the resume so how are these improving the resume and getting basic knowledge going to help you in the job application right this comes to the third point apply, applying for the jobs how you can apply for jobs just like the western culture indian culture is also moved towards the linkedin where you need to apply jobs through the linkedin especially vlsa sector a uh, lot of companies are small scale and they are not very high like Intel or Qualcomm etc. Right? There are a lot of medium scale companies or small scale companies as well which do not hire in bulk numbers but they do hire and they do require people. So how you can comply, uh, apply to these companies? One is through the training institute whatever I mentioned before and other one is through the LinkedIn. You need to search, you need to get through the recruiters who are hiring you need to message them and that is how is going to get you are going to get whatever opportunities are possible also some companies whatever you are found or you have found on the linkedin you will get to know the company's website go to the website check for job opportunities because whatever are there on the website probably are not on the linkedin and vice versa so just go to websites of companies as well and try to apply from that as well so how and this is the final step where you're either going to find a job opportunity on the LinkedIn through the person of your interest, through the job uh, role, whatever you have been trained for or through the company's website and the resume that you have previously prepared through the coaching institutes or the pre coaching institutes or the self-learned projects and the projects which they are going to teach you is going to help you to put forward from the various resumes whatever they have got because companies these days even though you are an fresher or even though you are just after your masters or even after your bachelors they are expecting you to know something because that is what puts you forward if there are 10 applications they are probably going to take only two or three and those two or three are going to have prior experience either internship or projects in the training institutes i have known a lot of people where this has helped them to get a job so 
even though you are uh, like spending money on the training institutes don't think it is in a bad way try to work simultaneously and get training as well so you are not wasting the money you are earning money and once you have trained try to leave the job and get another job or once you have got the job try to leave the previous job so in this manner you are not in a job insecure position and also you are pursuing your interest as well so rewinding the video whatever i have talked i have mentioned three important points first one the core basics whatever you need to rewind whatever you need to prepare if you are from cs or an ec background second one is going to be the training institutes what companies expect from you third one how you can apply or approach the companies this is a rather summary video and it's not very detailed how you can approach this process but i wanted to give you a rough idea on how this process works i have mentioned various training institutes are present so in my upcoming videos i am going to go in detail each and every training institute what they are going to offer and what you need to invest or is the return on investment particularly useful and that is how i am going to cover in the next parts of the video for this video uh, that's it i have covered whatever is needed for you to shift from it to vlsi i hope this video was useful if you still have any doubts of course i know you would have a lot of doubts just comment them in the comment section below or mail me in detail or just message me on instagram i will be happy to reply each and every one of you and clarify your doubts in detail this is just a summary video a lot of detailed videos regarding this topic are going to come up in the future thank you so much for staying out so long this is vivek signing off stay safe stay informative